service. I chose to focus on the impact of ankle braces on loading mechanics with return to activity. There we go. All right, so more specifically, I wanted to focus on ankle sprains as the injury um, that we're rehabbing from. So a little bit of background. Um, this is one of the most common injuries um, people sustain throughout the year. So roughly 2 million people will have an ankle sprain in the US annually. And of that 70% will have continued deficits following this. And this is also the number one risk factor for having future ankle sprains as well. This number is also probably an underestimation as many people just don't report or seek medical attention following this. And then at-risk populations include females, the younger population, as well as the active population. Um, so football, volleyball, and basketball were the primary sports that have an increased risk of ankle sprains. And then also the active military population as well is at an increased risk. All right, quick anatomy review. I just wanted to throw a picture up here to show what ligaments we're looking at. So primarily anterior talofibular, calcaneofibular, and posterior talofibular ligaments with the ATFL being that first ligament that takes most of the brunt um, following an inversion ankle sprain. And then I also wanted to have this picture on um, the opposite side here to show that really the joints of the ankle aren't following or moving through one single plane of motion. So you can see the subtalar joint axis is more so bisecting our sagittal plane and our frontal plane. So that's really just something to consider with loading mechanics and also why we see ATFL get impacted more with an ankle sprain because it's not just purely going straight laterally, we do have that more roll into the inverted position, um, causing more strain to be placed on ATFL. And then additionally, on this picture, I liked it because it showed where more of the muscles are attaching in comparison to the joint's axis of movement. Um, so you can see on the medial portion here, there are more muscles compared to the outside. So these muscles are working to plantar flex and evert the foot. And that's really important because if we consider when we're jumping, we go into that plantar flexion, we're naturally going to fall into a more inverted position as well. So we have to consider the strength of the muscles acting to evert the foot. And if they're strong enough to pull our feet back out under us when we land, or else we're gonna fall into that more compromised position, um, setting it up for that lateral ankle sprain and possibly damaging or tearing a ligament. Okay, and then I also found this chart that just, I think, get a nice overview of the different grades of the ankle sprains um, and kind of what you might expect in terms of symptoms and really general like treatment that people would um, go through. But I wanted to point out it's at this grade two level here where we start to see more complete tearing of fibers and grade three where you start to see a full tear or rupture because that's the point where we know ligaments play a huge role in proprioceptive input. So at that point, it's where you start to see if there are fibers getting torn, there's gonna to be impact on proprioception and balance. Okay. Um, so on proprioception and balance, um, and that's just something that we really need to consider when working with these patients and rehabbing them. Okay, um, so general clinical course um, in terms of if we had a patient come into the clinic and how we might go through tests and measures, we'd stick really, you know, with the standard range of motion MMT, check ligament laxity with anterior drawer and tailored tilt. And we could also utilize balance testing. So for more static balance, we could look at single leg stance. Dynamic balance could be star excursion balance test or the Y balance test as shown in the image below. Um, and then, like I said earlier, uh, many patients will have continued deficits following an inversion ankle sprain. And clinically how this could present is continued laxity, 
pain with inversion and reduced dorsiflexion range of motion overall. But when I was doing my research, kind of the continued theme that kept popping up was really similar to that idea of COPER versus non-COPER that we talk about for ACLs and how that individual is progressing or like, um, yeah, how they're handling that continued instability and being able to return back to their daily lives. So I thought that was a nice comparison in terms of when we consider using a brace, well, is the person struggling to return to their daily activity um, or not? And could the brace possibly be something that would benefit them? So I wanted to dive a bit more into the research there. When I started researching, I discovered there were thousands of articles on ankle braces. Um, so I tried to do my best um, to just break it down into um, two main kind of ideas of dynamic balance, because we know proprioception does get impacted, as well as jump landing to see um, more of the impact of loading mechanics overall. So first I'm gonna talk about dynamic balance. So I think generally there's kind of this assumption that and I had this too when I had my ankle injury that if I use an ankle brace, I can rely on the brace and it's gonna put my foot where it needs to be. So when I'm doing the, any of the activities I wanna do, I'll be fine. Um, but in terms of research, really what they're finding is that people with chronic ankle instability aren't having any additional benefit in terms of proprioceptive input from that brace. So. Um, it's not providing any additional awareness as to where the foot is in space during more dynamic balance activity. Um, additionally, off of that, um, I dove into and looked at more the prophylactic use of ankle braces. And if someone who did not have any history of ankle sprains or ankle injuries, if this was beneficial overall in improving their dynamic balance and reducing risk of injury, um, and the research is really saying, based off systematic review and meta-analysis, that that's not the case. There's really a weak effect overall on the benefit of that. Um, there was a slightly better outcome for those with chronic ankle instability, but still not enough to say that this is something that all patients should be using um, in terms of balance. But I also found a different article. And I thought this one was interesting because it took a more specific look at comparing ankle braces and athletic tape. So in this case, they, and this was for prophylactic use. So participants here included collegiate football players who had no history of ankle injuries, and they performed a baseline test for the Y balance test. And then were provided an ankle brace on one side and athletic tape on the other. So the image on the bottom here is actually from the article itself. And they did then a pretest of the Y balance, went out and participated in practice as normal, and then did the post test. And what they found was that not only was there no difference between the athletic tape and the ankle brace, there was also no difference from that baseline measurement when they didn't have either. So there really wasn't any added benefit overall when performing the dynamic balance. Um, so in general, when we consider the specific um, component of dynamic balance and we talk to our patient population, no, there's not an added benefit, but we also know that there's a huge psychological component to PT. So if they feel that it's helping them, there also doesn't appear to any be there doesn't appear to be any contraindications or negative um, components to using an ankle brace in terms of dynamic balance specifically. So switching over to jump landing, I focused more on a couple specific articles for this section because they focused on that fatigue component. So testing the impact of an ankle brace at the point where the athlete is fatigued, um, because that's really the point we're most concerned of an inverted inversion ankle sprain, because the muscles aren't working at their peak performance, the person's tired, and it could just be that perfect timing to land in that compromised position. So 
I thought this was interesting because this study was done in 2008 and they looked at volleyball players and utilized they have three different groups. So one was a control group that had no ankle brace. One was a group that utilized the lace up ankle brace. And the other was a group that had the semi solid brace. So the one with the hard, pl hard plastic on the outside. And they performed a vertical jump test. So this is the image from the article as well, where they would do a one step um, double leg jump and land on the leg that had the brace or for the control group the identified leg that they were looking at. Um, and what they found was that when they were looking specifically at that time to stability, so that point where our center of pressure, center of mass gets back into our base of support, in the anterior to posterior direction, the lace up ankle brace actually proved to be the most beneficial or took the least time to return to that point of stability compared to no ankle brace and the semi solid ankle brace. Um, but when we look at the uh, medial lateral time to stability, there really was no difference between the three, but that was more so due to they thought the type of jump they were performing because it was so dominant in that sagittal plane um, that there just wasn't a lot of movement medial lateral. Now, more recently, there was a study done in 2020 that looked at the impact of ankle braces and compared it to kinesio tape um, following a fatigue protocol. So, they utilized one group had a lace up ankle brace and the other group had kinesio tape that was actually applied in a way that was trying to facilitate muscle contraction. Um, and I have a picture on the next slide here of how they went about doing that. But the what they were measuring included ground reaction force and kinesio or not kinesio tape, ground reaction force and times of stability or where our center of pressure was in relationship to our base of support. Um, so this is the image from the article here. And what they found was, so what they did was with the lateral jump, they had an elevated platform and landed on the force plate. And what they found was actually that the lace up ankle brace decreased the range of motion at the ankle, meaning that it increased the, over, the overall peak vertical ground reaction force. So ultimately what that means is that the foot and ankle weren't attenuating the force the way that they typically do, causing that to go up towards the knee and the knee was taking on more load than it should be with that type of jump. Um, and then in comparison, the KT tape actually um, presented with a smaller anterior to posterior and medial lateral movement of the center of pressure. So it took less time for, um, that individual or the participants to return to the stability in both directions. Um, so really what they were suggesting was, well, maybe the KT tape, when we get to that point of fatigue, maybe it's providing that additional benefit so that we're helping the muscles kind of keep working um, when we're at a more exhausted or tired point of the activity. Um, but I wanted to show, this was how they applied the kinesio tape. So first they took, two pieces and ran it along the plantar surface of the foot. And one piece would follow medial head, the other lateral head of gastroc. And then that horizontal piece is there just to anchor the ends. Um, the next piece, they started um, from the inferior lateral part of the knee following the muscle belly of tib, tib anterior and onto the dorsum of the foot. And then the last piece, the pull was from fibula head down to the bottom of the foot. So following the peroneals in this case. Um, so really, again, what they were trying to do was get some type of muscle facilitation or some added benefit. Um, and when Carrie and I practiced this, kind of a couple things that we noted or took away from it was you need really long pieces of tape overall um, to span the length of the leg and down onto the foot. But also I was providing about a 50% pull on the tape and probably could have used more because we are trying to facilitate some type of contraction, um, whether it be small or large. Um, yeah. So in terms of jump landing, I think it's less clear 
than dynamic balance in terms of, we know dynamic balance isn't proving to benefit proprioception. But with jump landing, I think it's a bit more mixed in terms of, yeah, ankle braces are beneficial or they're not. Um, so I think it comes back to, does the patient find it helpful? And is it also not causing problems up the chain, at the knee or the hip? Um, so that takes me to kind of taking a step back and considering clinical application. I think the big thing is what's the patient's perception of their instability? Um, and do they find an ankle brace beneficial or not? And in terms of the KT tape, I was kind of thinking about when would that be helpful? And I think it would be more for that higher functioning individual who overall really good body awareness, but maybe some concern of um, ankle sprain during activity. Um, so probably someone who's coping better overall with their rehab. Um, but that kind of takes me into my next point of also just the ankle foot mechanics are so variable between people. Um, and I think, you know, with athletic tape, we can kind of mold the tape or like apply it in a way that best matches their specific foot mechanics. And an ankle brace doesn't always take that into account. Um, but I wanted to show or include the picture um, here because I think this is a really nice option because it adds that stability on either side of the ankle, but then the straps really create more of that um, pull that's similar to tape. So you can mold it or like apply it in a similar way to you would in a similar way that we would with athletic tape. Um, so I think this would be a really good option to try out. Um, that it, cause it could be a little bit more specific and individualized. Um, and then I added orthotics on the side just because it was something, it was a rabbit hole. I think I could have gone down, but I didn't look too much into in terms of how angle braces could impact. Um, like if someone has a custom orthotic and if that could impact kind of the function or purpose of it itself, if we're not having that kind of specific shaping of um, either the tape or the ankle brace in that case. But then lastly, really in PT, we need to keep prioritizing strengthening dynamic balance and jumping mechanics and really monitoring like if they are jumping, is that load and force distribution appropriate um, before they go back to sport and really screening or taking a look at what ankle brace they are using so that it doesn't, um, cause any future problems because um, kind of the primary adverse effect of an ankle brace that I was seeing was more that limiting range of motion. So we don't want to limit it to the point where it's less than our typical physiological motion, um, but we can still provide some support in that case and the patient still feels that they have some support overall. Yeah, say thank you. Here are my references and opening up the questions.